Hey, Composite Gloves here, and this is the second video in the how to make your first song in FO Studios. And now I'm going to break it up into segments from here on and put them in a playlist instead of doing the whole hour long video thing, simply because I feel like teaching concepts will be easier for you to understand, especially if you have no prior knowledge before this. And you can also skip over sections you feel you already understand or know enough about. Uh, so now you've watched the first video, you have a vision, you have some specific technique, and you open up FL Studios, and you're confronted with five essential menus. And you need to know what these five menus do in order to work in FL Studios. So you could get away with not knowing what a few of them do, but uh, you really should know what all of them do. It'll just make your life easier, and your music will improve dramatically. So uh, let's hop right to it. So if you are missing any of the menus you see right now, um, they will be controlled by these five buttons up here. And these are essentially your most important uh, parts. And they toggle these on and off. So right here you have your sequencer. And to turn it on and off, you, it's just the first button. And you can lay down your track here. You can put down audio clips, automation clips. Automation clips are commands to turn knobs on and off automatically. And you can tell FL Studios to do that here in your sequencer. Um, and yeah, you just start building your song and when you push play up here, as long as this button's not selected, it will start playing through your sequencer right here. So that's what your sequencer is. Then you come over here, you have your step editor, which is the second one here. It's also called your channel rack and it's called that because you have all your channels loaded up here. A channel is, uh, it could be three things essentially. It can be an audio clip. Or, or sample, audio clip or sample. It can be a synthesizer and it can be an automation clip. Don't worry about automation clips. You'll be creating them in your sequence here. This is also called the playlist. Like if you hover over this, you'll also see in FL Studios to give you a little help right here over whatever you're hovering. And you see, oh, this is also called the playlist. I call it a sequencer, call it what you want. So these are your channels and these things are called your steps. They're these little bricks and you can put them on and off. Now this concept is very important to understand. This is where you build your patterns. So whenever you're working on a pattern, you could put notes in here using something called the piano roll and you could put in rhythms using these editors or you could go in the piano roll and do that alternatively. What does that mean? Well, first let's look at this sequencer real quick. So in music, you have something called the beat and you can zoom in I guess this is navigating in the sequencer 101 real quick. You can zoom in, dragging the end of these bars at the top. You can make your tracks, you go up and down like this, but you can make your tracks wider or smaller by grabbing this corner and going up and down. But this is the way I recommend doing it. You can click the middle mouse button, your, the wheel on your mouse, and hold and you can drag around. You can hold down control and scroll up to zoom in and scroll out to zoom out. And if you hold down control, click your middle mouse button down and drag, you change the width of your uh, various tracks. And man, this is like totally my biggest complaint and I go over to another DAW is the fact that their stuff doesn't move like this. This is the best way to navigate around a nonlinear editor ever. But anyways, let's talk about this grid real quick. So you have this grid and it is uh, got these these lines. And these lines, you have these dark lines, you have these light lines, these darker lines, and then you have the darkest lines. And the darkest lines are, have numbers on them. One, two, three. Well, the space between two of these dark lines, between two numbers, is called a measure. And it has been broken up so that uh, there are four lines one two three four before or four boxes between every measure the length of one box is called a beat so each one of these represents a beat okay and this beat is broken down further into four smaller boxes if you took just two boxes this would be called an eighth note if you took one whole box this is a quarter note and if you took one box this is called the 16th note. If you don't know music theory, um, I suggest learning it, at least learning the basics, because it 
directly correlates with this here grid. Right now, there are four beats in a measure. You can change this in settings if you desire, but uh, we're gonna we're just gonna focus on the main principles here. But that's important to understand. And if you want to know how it's selecting bits and pieces of the uh, the sequencer, you just hold down Control and drag on the number line, and you are now selecting. Um, also, it's important to note that I am on the Paint tool, so that's why my cursor was behaving the way it was. So anyways, that's the sequencer in a nutshell. We're going to go farther into it uh, in later tutorials, but just so you know, these uh, editors, these steps right here, correlate with this sequencer. So each one of these beats, which is, uh, these darker lines, which I now refer to as the beat, correlates here. So this is beat 1, beat 2, beat 3, and beat 4. And if you were to change the settings on, uh, maybe you want three beats in a measure, maybe you're making a waltz, then there would only be three of these. Your, your step sequencer would automatically change. And there's four, because there's four lines in between ev in every beat. So these are your 16th notes. So that's what the uh, the steps are all about. And so you can lay down um, some sounds. So we know that this is our kick drum. And you can lay down some sounds like this. And we just told the kick to play on every beat in our measure. So if we play that, we can hear this. And this is now we've constructed what's called a pattern. And to preview your pattern, so in order to switch the play mode from your sequencer to your pattern, you have to come up here and select this little arrow button right here, your pattern button, and you will hear what's being played in your pattern. Now, how do we know? And if you turn it off, it'll switch to the sequencer again. You'll see this, the transport control shows up over here. Now, how do we know uh, what pattern we're in? Well, your pattern is up here and you can see what pattern you're in and you can add a pattern so you can make your kick and maybe put your kick in your sequencer and then you can add another pattern and you can name it we'll name it ship and you can color it just for the heck of it by clicking this here arrow and selecting a color and you hit enter and now you're on pattern chip and you can add maybe a clap as we have labeled here and we could preview our clap and we could slap that down. And now if we switch, so if we switch to our pattern preview, we'll hear our clap only. But if we switch to our uh, sequencer, our playlist preview, you will hear the kick and the clap because that's what we have playing here. And you'll see that it's pattern one and pattern chip. And so that's how that works. And you can uh, switch between patterns by dragging up or down. You can click add another if you so desire. And you can also select your patterns by clicking this down arrow and specifically finding the one that you want. And you see there's a whole bunch of options. You can clone a pattern and you can rename and color your patterns. You can just do all these nifty options. So that's uh, manipulating patterns 101. And now to add, now let's say you want to add different sounds. Well, if you have sounds on your hard drive, you can click and you can find your sound, grab it and drag it and add it to your channel rack or you can add it to your sequencer if you desire. But here's a, there's a number of other ways to add sounds that I recommend. And uh, we're going to cover that when we cover these things individually. But that's the general concept of the channel rack and that's the general concept of the playlist so now you have your browser and this is one's going to be covered real fast it's a browser it's a file browser so you can go through and look through your uh, files that you have on here like I have um, some files and you can easily preview sounds and, and you can drag them on and add them to your channel rack or your sequencer and so that is why you'd want to add things to your browser. And how do you add something to your browser? Well, I'm going to give you a real quick hint. I'll cover this in the browser video. But you go to Options, File Settings, and then you click this File button right here. And you look for your file. You add it. You click OK. And then you may need to refresh your browser or just restart FL Studios. I believe it will just automatically update if you refresh it. And that is all you have to do there. And so that's your browser. And you can also 
select synthesizers and things from here. Okay. Now the next thing is maybe you want to add a synthesizer to your song, which at some point you're going to want to do. There's like eight ways to do this. I'm going to cover one way. You have this little plus button down here. You click that and you can add, I have third party stuff right now, but you can add any sort of plugin. And now plugins can do a number of things. They can do us uh, compression to your audio, meaning change the dynamic range. They can do all, there's these things called chorus effects. And then you have like your, your synthesizers. So if we like open a synthesizer, here's a synthesizer and it pops up right here. Here's the channel and you can play it using your keyboard. As long as your keyboard, your typing keyboard is enabled up here. And so that's really nifty. If this is not on, your keyboard doesn't work as a MIDI controller. So that's what a MIDI controller is, by the way. It allows you to send MIDI messages to tell a plugin how to behave. And now that's like a, it's really cool as you get farther into MIDI controllers, uh, sort of the control they can give you. But that is the browser. And there's one other nifty feature I guess I should cover in this video. And that is you have the smart search option. So let's say you want to kick you can type in kick and you hit enter and it will start going through your kick, uh, finding any kick related thing in here. And you can hit F2 to go to the next instance where there is a kick in the name and you can do that. Or you can hit F3 to go to the previous instance where the kick is. So that's really nice. Um, so yeah, so we'll cover the browser in the future. Up here, amongst the most important controls are file export. Okay, so you have export, and you're generally going to want to do a WAV file or an MP3. And we'll talk about exporting again in a separate video because that's like mega important. Uh, you have another way to add various things. I said I was going to cover one, but you have add, and you can add a channel. And in your channel, you have all your plugins again, and they're labeled according to. Uh, what they do like these are these are MIDI controllers these are synthesizers these are more synthesizers um, and we'll talk about this as time goes on you have your pattern editor again so this is another place to add patterns find first empty is the equivalent of adding a new pattern so you can just click that and you're on a new pattern now oh uh, yeah there's just various options so uh, that's uh, patterns your view again is the same essentially controls as this thing and so if we move over here, we have our transport controls, which we've already covered a little bit. You have the pattern play and then your, uh, your sequencer play. And then you have the tempo. The tempo is how many beats in a minute. So how fast this essentially moves across the sequencer. So 80 is rather slow. Dance tempo is, uh, for me, it's 128 usually um, for just typical dance. Drum and bass is like 172, so that's way faster. Hip-hop can be anywhere between as slow as 40. Usually it's somewhere between like 60 and like 90. It can it can move up into faster realms depending on just what you're making. Um, and so that's that. Again, you have your typing keyboard up here. This could be important. This is your snap to control on your sequencer. So right now it's snapping to the nearest cell as you can see. And if you snap it to the line, it'll just go to the nearest line, which behaves very similarly to cell. Um, and you also have the ability to go to half step, which is a much, if you zoom in, you have these half steps here. So you just doubled your precision basically on where you want to place things. This could be very helpful. And you can also go to triplets. Um, if you don't know what that is, look up some music theory. Triplets are really cool. They're basically, a, as opposed to 1, 2, 3, 4, you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 1, like triple it, triple it. So you get a, another rhythm, and this allows you to select it so you can place notes in that rhythm. And if you go back to cell, this also applies for the piano roll. So I've already covered patterns, and uh, real quick, if you're wondering why your transport control doesn't go past 2, Maybe you're like, oh no, I already broke FL Studios. Well, that's because you don't have anything down here. If you were to select something like more than the first measure, you could select out here. Okay. 
But the reason is if there's nothing out here, you have an infinite amount of measures going this direction. So it'll instantly loop back to the beginning once it knows there's no more information past the measure you've worked on. And that's really nice because now it'll just loop for you as opposed to go out into oblivion and you have to come up here and push stop and bring it all the way back to the beginning every single time. So that's why it won't go past one. As you put down things, it will it will go right on past it. So that's your snap options. This could be super duper important um, depending on what you're doing. So now let's go into the piano roll. So you have a, a synthesizer here and you open it and it displays the interface and you want to write some notes for your synthesizer. Well, the way to do this is you go, you right click, go to piano roll and there's all these other menus here and you can replace it or rename it and color it if you don't like the name plucked and it's yellow. Um, you can just do all sorts of things here, but you go to the piano roll and all the same navigation options apply here, but you see, we have a keyboard now and we can lay down some notes. And so as we know, this is our beat. These are our beats and this is time going this direction. So we can lay down like a C major chord and you hit play. Oh, see, now we're playing on our, our sequencer and we don't want that. We want it to preview our pattern. And you can see the MIDI data is represented here. So you hit pattern play and now you hit your uh, space bar to, to trigger the play button. Space bar triggers play. And you can hear our C major chord coming out. Now, you might make notes way over here in, in additional measures like measure five. And you're like, whoa, it doesn't go that far. Well, you can drag. And you can see uh, our notes are there. And you can also scroll using this bottom guy here if you don't want your step sequencer to be like huge. Also, if you get rid of notes, you'll see that they turn dark gray, meaning they're not being used. If you're writing down kick drums like this, and uh, you can see that as you need notes and you go into those next parts they'll just turn on and it'll turn on the entire measure not just that one section you also will notice down here that if we add another synthesizer and i'm going to show you another way to add a synthesizer there are like no excuses for not being able to get plugins into your area you come up here and you click this little thing that looks like a plug and you have all these different plugins i have third party stuff so just ignore like the weird name things and you can drag, you can click and drag it onto your channel strip and boom, it creates a new channel and you can play it when you have it selected. If you have something else selected, then your MIDI controller, your keyboard will control that. And you can start to put things down and we have these things that are called ghost notes. Go to helpers up here at the triangle, ghost notes, turn those on. And essentially, that's how you start writing notes. So I'm just trying to cover the basic parts. We'll cover this stuff more in detail as we get along here. And uh, that is the gist of it. There's one more part. You have this thing. It's called your mixer. And as we talked about, this turns it on and off. The mixer's job is to mix things. What does that mean? Well, you have your various sounds. And some of them may overlap in spectral content. Some of them may have a lot of mid-range and they are killing each other out. Well, you can route them through your mixer. Now by default, things except for these guys are routed to the master channel. And to turn that on and off, you click right here and it's in what's called the dock. So it's always at your left. And you can scroll through your mixer via this guy down here. Um, so that's what that is. And right now everything's going through your master. Now a basic channel, this is controls your volume. This mutes your channel or unmutes it. This controls your panning, so which speaker it comes out of. And that's those are the most important controls for the mixer right now. And as you send things through the mixer, you can add effects to them over here using your slots. Now, how are we sending things to the mixer? Right now, this doesn't have a channel. That's what these things are, the channel assignments on your mixer. And if you click on the plugins themselves, they have the track name here. Uh, which is which track on the mixer they're going to and on the mixer. I have no idea why they did this, but they called them inserts as opposed to uh, tracks, which they have somewhere else. So that's kind of interesting, but you can assign it a track by just dragging. You see, we can see which track it's on 
Also, if you click on your plugin and you hit Control L, it'll assign it to the first free uh, track. And it will actually color it and name it for you at, when you assign it. So if, you, if I were to change this and make it a different color, it's not reflected in our mixer track. So just be aware of that. Uh, but now it's sending the audio from this plugin to track five. And from track five down here, it's represented, it's going into our master out. So everything still goes to the master. You can change this, however. You could say, uh, don't go to this track um, via that. You just click the little arrow. And now when you play something, you see the audio comes out here. And this dB bar, that's what this is called, which shows you how loud the volume is, uh, shows that audio is coming in here, but it's not getting to the masters. Uh, down here you have where your, what speakers you want it to use. So you can tell them, you can tell your DAW, FL Studios, which speaker you want it to use. This is like a whole, a whole mess of information right here. And we're going to cover things more in detail as we go along. But uh, now you understand if maybe a, a thing isn't coming out, well, how do you get it to come out? Well, you can right click on any of these arrows and you can tell the audio on the track you currently have selected, which will be bright green. You could say route to this track. So you can route it to multiple tracks or you can send it to this track only, meaning get rid of anywhere else it's going and send it only to this track. So now it's only going to this track. Now we hear it. Well, what's happening? Well, our audio is going in this track being routed to this track and this track, all, all of them by default, go to the master out. And so that's how that works. You can also side chain and do various other things, which is like a topic for another day. Um, but anyways, you can also load, it, load in effects plugins, which are different types of plugins from synthesizers. So you won't see your synthesizer plugins here usually. And uh, unless there's some sort of a bug. And so you can load in various effects here uh, on plugins. We're going to talk about plugins. Um, and that's essentially what those things do. Uh, now, when you come over here, you have this part right here. These are your microphone inputs. If you have a, a USB audio interface, you can select your microphone inputs here. So right now, on this track, which is another dock, and you can click the little gray line to make it go away or come back. And on this dock, I have my microphone on, and it's recording my voice, and you'll notice that it's muted. Well, that's so I don't hear myself, but it's getting recorded into a plugin that I've loaded up. Okay. And uh, that's, that's the gist of what's going on right here. And I could turn the volume on and off. I could route it to a different channel. I could just, I could just do all sorts of stuff. Since I've muted it, the audio still goes in all the effects, but it does not reach the master out. So it doesn't go to the master out. But this is where I select my microphone. You will have to use an Ozio driver. Now we'll talk about this stuff later, but just so you know, this is where these settings exist. And if you really want to do this real quick, just go to your audio settings and this is the panel you need to be messing with. But we're gonna talk about that later. And this bottom one, you can also tell it to go to speakers directly out. So even if you have something that is not routed to your master channel, you could set down here what speakers you want it to go to and it would come out with those speakers. That could be super confusing though and you'd want to do that for very specific reasons um, that if you're an at-home producer, you probably just aren't going to need to use. But they're there for your options. You also see that they have effects built into your tracks, uh, typical effects. So we'll cover this as we go. But this is the general parts of FL Studio. So uh, just a quick review. You create your pattern here using your step sequencer and various controls. You drop those patterns in here. You can also drop sound files themselves. So if we were to, and as you can see, we have our, whoops, we have our sound file and you can right click to delete that. And from those sound files, so you create your patterns and you put them in your playlist or your sequence here, you can route those various things in your patterns through uh, your mixer and add effects and things. And now you're creating a song and you can browse and select sounds that you desire, or you can go onto your desktop and click and drag them on. Now there is one other thing I didn't mention that could be pretty important for this introductory video. 
Uh, so you see, we have our audio file here, but it just changed our entire channel rack view. Well, this is because it's created a folder for audio. It's actually there by default. So you have to click up here and go to unsorted to get back to your other channels and to get back to your plugins and things that you've loaded here. So what, if you load it in some other folder, that's where it's going to appear. So that can be very important. So that's the gist of it. Now, if that felt overwhelming, don't worry about it. We're going to cover these things more in detail. If you enjoy this tutorial, subscribe and have a blessed day.